So I'm sitting here at the Holiday Inn Suites in Las Vegas, and I'm laying in bed, and tomorrow night, Misha Tate fights. This is a woman that was retired, came back, but she came back for the sole purpose of chasing a championship, fighting Amanda Nunes again. Now, when it goes as bad as it did the last time, you would question why she wants to, but she's a competitor. And that's what she wants, and that's what she hopes to get, especially if she can get past Ketlin Vieira tomorrow. But that is not the root of the video. That is not the reason that we are here right now. We're here right now because Misha Tate comes back where she left the job at 1FC where she was essentially the president of the company or something to that effect, maybe a matchmaker or something. I'm not exactly sure. But she had a very important job within that organization, making good money living in Thailand, where it's not expensive to live, started a family, but her drive to become champion again was so strong that she came back to fighting. But then when you think about the way the landscape of the game is, Dustin Poirier fought Conor McGregor for a second time, a third time, opposed to taking what was a guaranteed title fight. Max Holloway, who just won very recently, um is supposed to be in line for a title fight with the champ Alexander Volkanovsky, but now is saying maybe the money fade out there is McGregor or someone else. Uh, obviously, not anyone else, honestly. McGregor. The money fight's McGregor. And with McGregor talking his name, McGregor pacing back and forth in front of the TV, Max Holloway now is intrigued. And Max Holloway may not be in pursuit of that third fight with Alexander Volkanovsky, even though it's very rare. It's very rare for a person to have lost two times and then get another title fight. Max has that on the table, but is now saying maybe I'll go and fight Conor McGregor. I think the money fight versus title fight debate that's really starting to pop up in the world is very indicative of the way sports are today. Um... The other day, Ryan Clark made fun of me because he said, I'm a traditionalist. I'm Kirk Herbstreet. I got a friend named Jamil Kelly that only watches college football because he loves it for how pure it is. But it's not so pure anymore because with the new NIL, people can recruit differently. People can pay these athletes like so many people thought should have happened a long time ago. I mean, but the, the kid, the five-star kid going to random places now seem much less likely because of Alabama being able to roll out a PowerPoint presentation and say, this is what my last starting quarterback made, a million dollars. Will you get that at place two, three, four, and five? It changes. And as the landscape changes, those purists, the Jamil Kellys, the Kirk Curve Streets, they don't really love the idea of the change. I saw Herb Street on ESPN one time look like he was really tore apart. But when I think the title fight versus money fight, I don't sit here and say it's wrong, but I just wonder when was, you know, there was a lot of promises made early. You get that belt, your life changes. That's the truth. You make more money for a normal fighter to become a champion. You are a part of the pay-per-view business when you're a champion. But nowadays, as the game is changing, you see guys saying, if I get the McGregor fight, I'm willing to step away from a title. Now, there is no other fight like that in fighting. It's only McGregor. You get Conor McGregor to talk about you. You get Conor McGregor to engage with you. You get Conor McGregor to put you over, essentially. It's enough for a fighter to say, forget that belt. Even though I've been told since day one that that belt was all that matters, I'm willing to go and step across the octagon from the Irishman. Now, Habib Nurmagomedov, he had the ideal situation. He got McGregor as the champion, so he got the belt and he got the money fight at the same time. Well, Conor's not around that title anymore. So now you got guys looking down the rankings to fight a guy that is honest. He's, he's injured. He's not even, he can't even fight right now. 
but he's on the tip of everybody's tongue because that's the money fight. But for the purists, what happened to the title being the most important thing in all the fighting? What happened to becoming the champion? For a guy like me, I, I love that belt being strapped around my waist. I could not have imagined anything different. I, I love the money that came with it, obviously. Made a lot of money doing it. But I'm not sure if I'm in a position of Dustin Poirier, if I'm in the position of a Max Holloway. I don't know what my decision would be, and it's hard for me to blame them when you look at the difference in the numbers that a fight with McGregor brings opposed to a fight with other people. I was lucky also. With Jones, we made big money. We sold pay-per-views, but not everybody can do that. That's why our champions, you see them talking about other promotions. You see uh, Usman talking about Canelo because you know you get out there with Canelo, you make a ton of money. Even though Kamar Usman's doing really well right now, trust me, I know him personally, he's doing fine. But when did that title become not as important in terms of chasing out money? When did the purity of a college football game start to lose itself just at the NIL? Because the reality is everything that was going on now in the open I think a lot of it was going on before. That's why you see programs like SMU getting a debt penalty and never recovering. You see all the recruiting violations. People are just cheating. The recruiting opposed to now doing it out in the open. So it hasn't changed all that much. For a long time, all the champions were the money fights. They had the belts. But now the landscape's changing. The sports world is changing. And I think fighters are starting to change with it. But I do believe that it all comes back around to that championship. Because now Dustin Poirier got his money fight, made a boatload of money twice with Conor McGregor. Said something the other day, if I had to retire now, I could. I'm comfortable. But I got some ass whippers to hang out. So it ultimately goes right back to that 13 pounds of gold. And you have to hope that in that money fight, it elevates you to the point that you become the man at the top of the marquee, that can move that needle. I know for a fact, and my man Habib, one of my better friends, Habib may not see eye to eye with Conor McGregor, but there is no doubt in terms of what that fight did for Habib Nurmagomedov. He gained like 9 million Instagram followers on the night. And that wasn't just because of the brawl. It was because of who the brawl was with and all that happened surrounding the fight. The bad blood between these two will never die, will never dissipate. But what can't be questioned is the impact that Conor McGregor had on Habib Nurmagomedov's career in terms of visibility and helping him to become who he is today. And I think Max Holloway wanting the same thing. I think Dustin Poirier got the same thing. I watched Dustin Poirier. His, his uh, social presence has expanded since his fight. But ultimately, it goes back to the 13 pounds of gold. And ultimately, it goes back to what college football looked like back in the day. I mean, I'm still waiting for that new college football uh, video game. They quit making it because people sued for exactly what they are doing today. Name, image, and likeness. Guys said, hey, that looks like me in the video game, which it was. There were a lot of guys in the game with just no name on their back. It was quarterback number 14 from Nebraska. Well, we know who that is. We are our number 10, Tommy Frazier. We knew it was Tommy Frazier. We knew it. There just wasn't his name on the back of the jersey. But today, you bring that game back, you can get paid for it. I don't mind it as much as people try to make it seem. I don't mind the game changing around us and the people changing with the game. But ultimately, I think when it's all said and done, those memories with that title is what really does kind of stay with you. Because, look, you can have all the money in the world. You can make all the memories. But the, the, the memory of standing there and getting that belt wrapped around your waist is one that cannot be replaced. So, guys, take the money fight if it's there. But ultimately, go get that belt. That belt is what matters. That belt 
will allow for you to go and tell your kids and your family at some point, I was the best fighter in the world. Not many people get to say that. So, money fight versus title fight. I love what Misha Tate's doing. Misha said, you know what? This belt motivates me. I want to be the champion. But I also love what Dustin Poirier did in the summer and said, let me get my money. And then I can get back and pursue this goal. It's all, it, it all works in a big circle. But ultimately, at the end of that circle, in the middle, is 13 pounds of gold. So you got to go chase it. It's invaluable to be the champion of the world. I chase it in wrestling. I chase it in fighting. When you become that, nothing matches it. So get your money, but ultimately go get your belt. Guys, I didn't want to not do this tonight because I just forget stuff so crazy. Now I don't know what's going on. Sunday, another tale from the hood. And boy, it is a good one. I'm talking drunk fighting. I'm talking uppercuts, kicks. This one is going to knock your socks off. So be ready for it on Sunday. Remember, guys, like, subscribe, leave your comment. Tell me some of the things you guys want to see out here. And I appreciate you guys all following me uh, on my YouTube page and for the rest of my career. So like, subscribe, and I'll see you all later.